Hello. Hello. Glad to see everyone. Thank you for hanging with us a few extra minutes. So we're all connected. We all have sound. Yes. We all have video. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Technology is an amazing thing. <laughs> when it works. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> So I think actually we should probably just start with a brief introduction for each of us and maybe a brief introduction um, about Scalay Sisters, just very briefly. <laughs> I just said, hi, mom. <laughs> I'm He's Congrats watching you. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> you say hi to yourself. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> Get off the computer, Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was just too perfect. <laughs> okay, so as you were saying before. Sorry. Mentioned we all have teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> and a um, little briefly about Scully Sisters, and then we'll jump into this challenge, which we just, I don't know, we got the idea like last week, I think, and said, let's do it. And so we are doing it and excited to share it with all of you. I have my very non-pretty, non-color checklist that Brandy designed and uh -huh. put together. And so we're excited to explain that to you today and hope that you'll join us. Yeah. So I'm Misty Winkler and I am a second generation homeschooler. I have five kids from 16 to seven on Saturday. What? No way. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And so we homeschool classically and um, we, um, that's, I like to read and write. And so here we are. Brandy, your turn. I feel like I should like to do arithmetic. <laughs> <laughs> I could read it. You want to something else. <laughs> All right. I'm Brandy Vensel. Um, I am in a windstorm in California right now. So hopefully my power lasts for this whole thing. Uh, I have four kids, 17 senior in high school down to 11 fifth grade. I too like the language arts. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and occasionally I do math, but my policy is I do not do math on weekends. All right. <laughs> That's like a real rule. It's like they come up to me and they ask me and I'm like, no, it's Saturday. I do not do math on Saturdays. So I had to say the other night, like it's 8 PM. I'm done. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Um, uh, my name is Abby Wall, and I am a mother of five as well. Um, my husband was homeschooled um, because they kicked him out of kindergarten. Um, <laughs> he stood up to bullies. Um, well, they asked him maybe he should not return. So, um, wow. Yeah, um, we are a farming, ranching family. So um, I count sheep. For, for real. <laughs> Not to fall asleep. <laughs> Not to fall asleep, but I actually count sheep. I do my correcting of math pages in the afternoons, but I try to avoid them also on the weekends. <laughs> I also like reading. <laughs> oh no, I don't know if you saw this. Rachel has decided yeah. we all need to do math as our challenge. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually the top two contenders for me, Rachel. Was it really? Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. I brainstormed a ton of ideas for math. Um, You're, uh, Abby's going to actually expand her. <laughs> there. But then I decided to be self-serving. <laughs> I'll move my microphone back, Susan. Is that better? It's possible I just have a really loud voice. <laughs> We're trying here. Um, you know what, Rachel, I will tell you, if we were all doing algebra or above, I would probably be uh, happy, but I'm pretty much done with fractions and decimals. <laughs> so, it's the arithmetic that's killing me. Uh, all right. So what'd you say next? We have to introduce Scalay Sisters. Well, Is that I'm what you sure. said? We'll let you do that, Matt, Misty, because I'm still chasing my microphone around, apparently. <laughs> Sorry. So Scalay Sisters is a podcast and 
community for the classical Charlotte Mason homeschool mom to have interesting and engaging conversations to learn and grow while she's helping her children learn and grow, which is a statement I hear Brandy say in my head all the time <laughs> <laughs> from the podcast. So, but one of the things that we have been talking about quite a bit, and we had Abby on the podcast last season to talk about the information action ratio. Yes. And that's an idea that we have been talking about together for, well, ever since then, really, about how can we um, not just be always taking in information and learning more, but actually doing something with the information. And Norms and Nobility talks about that quite a bit in you know, virtue is actually doing the right thing, not just knowing the right thing. If we aren't using and doing, then the knowing kind of is pointless. So we brainstormed a little bit of a way to help ourselves and you with that. And it came out as the November challenge yes. uh, for putting one principle into practice every weekday or every school day in November. And so Brandy. Yes. About the principle. Okay. So the principle is exposure breeds taste. And we got this from the composer. What's his name in Misty? Oh, Hodges. Uh, Hodges. Thank you. John Hodges. Yes. He said this, oh my goodness, when our kids were really little at yes. some Cersei talk, I mean, over 10 years ago, for sure. Yeah. But I listened um, to that talk like three or four times. Yes. In the early 2000s. Yeah, I did too. Um, and it was huge because really, I don't know about you guys, but what I realized was I was always in a hurry for taste to be there. So just like it's frustrating, like you serve green beans and they're like, I don't like green beans. The same kind of thing, like you're giving them something you feel like is good, right? So... Um, Maybe it's artwork or maybe it's some sort of great, wonderful musical thing. Maybe it's math, <laughs> but whatever it is. And when they don't immediately respond with like, oh, we love this, then it's really discouraging and frustrating. So, oh, what is this? So, <laughs> okay, so I'm trying, I'm trying here. So drawing attention. Sorry. Okay. Um, anyway, so what I realized was it's not just exposure breeds taste. That's true. But like when you read about, for example, acquiring a taste for vegetables, right? Ex repeated exposure breeds taste. So for example, they say with the average vegetable that a child doesn't like, it takes over a hundred tries for them to acquire the taste, which is why so many of us hit adulthood and we're finally like, oh, these aren't so bad. Well, we've probably had our 100 tastes by then, right? So the idea that we were trying to put put here into work is that a, we can take a little thing and we can expose many times in a short period of time and we might actually start to see the acquirement of taste. Now, with that said, this isn't a promise. <laughs> because that might not happen. It might not happen. that guarantee. It's free. Yeah, really, exactly. <laughs> Good point. But you know, it, there's a, how, how do I put this? Uh, sometimes we're not very diligent. We get discouraged on the first day or the second day because it doesn't go as well as we think. And so the goal here is for us to persevere, persevere for a whole month. It doesn't really promise anything, but I'm, I, I'm always reminded of something Charlotte Mason said, which is not that everything took perfectly in childhood. This is a paraphrase, like a really bad paraphrase. We're going to go with it. But, but that she doubted that anything that did develop in adulthood hadn't been initiated in childhood in some way. Mm -hmm. And so if we think about the things that are really hard for us to acquire in adulthood, usually we weren't exposed at all, right? And so the idea is like not that this is necessarily going to bear fruit in December because you did it in November. It might. But the idea is that we're taking this opportunity to do this in a really diligent way and maybe we aren't going to notice the results until they're 25, but still it'll be a blessing, you know, for them, no matter what it is that we choose. And it'll be a blessing for us because we really can choose something that we weren't exposed to either. I mean, we can, it doesn't have to be just for our kids. So 
anyway that's what that's the story behind exposure breeds taste <laughs> all right so next <laughs> sorry so with um i think it's it's a great principle to start putting into action because I think it's one that we don't think about that often. I mean, it's true. Doesn't make it on the top 20 for Charlotte Mason necessarily, although, you know, it, can, it fits. But yeah. it's so doable because it's not, it doesn't require an overhaul or a change really in anything we're doing. And it, it can be just little bits. So if we're using the vegetable analogy, you know, it's just one little bite. It's not a whole meal centered around the one thing all the time. So um, you're not forcing your family to become vegetarians. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not today. <laughs> Never for us. <laughs> And then our food's <laughs> tastes really are important, you know, it, yeah. um, and our taste also, I think it has a lot more impact on the home atmosphere and on their response to other schoolwork. Um, and if we just let the easy thing shape tastes, then, um, it can be, you know, we can wonder how, like why they aren't appreciating something or yeah. why it's not easy or um, why they would just rather watch YouTube. <laughs> like, well, <laughs> YouTube's easier. And some of these things that are good and excellent and worthy are harder to like. Yeah. And so it takes more time to more exposures for that taste to come. Whereas the easy pop culture thing, you have, you can hear one song sometimes on the radio and have it stuck in your head immediately. Cause it's just that easy. And what's excellent and good is harder. And so it takes more exposure. So we're going to get in some good, solid exposure to something true, good, beautiful with this challenge. So exposure breeds taste is like the guiding principle but that doesn't mean we're all doing the same exact thing. So right. I don't know who of us is going to explain how this is going to work. Abby, Abby you turn. Your turn? Yes, my turn. <laughs> so what we're going to do is choose one thing to expose our children and ourselves to every day. And it can be something very small. Um, one of the things that we discussed would be maybe you want to do more classical music. Maybe you've totally neglected composer study for months or years. And so instead of trying to do a full, you know, change of all the schedule and really deep dive in, you decide to listen to one song a day. And it can be maybe even just a movement, right? You pick. I was like a 30 minute song. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, a movement, right? right? Five minutes. It yeah. could be five minutes or it could be two minutes, right? Um, and you choose one thing. Um, maybe you choose one composer, like somebody well known. Um, I know that in the past we've done, we've done a little bit of study on Beethoven and then we listen to, you know, some of the different parts of the symphony, but then I taught my kids Ode to Joy, right? And we sing that one in church. So it's things that they already know, it's easy to do, um, and it doesn't have to be this huge thing. Um, some of the other ideas that are floating around, I don't wanna take anyone else's, but it would be um, reading a poem a day, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> like was that mine that's not mine. No, no. <laughs> another thing would be math so i actually did really consider this and so i'll give you some ideas um, i saw some people said like life of fred for math because it is really fun and kids enjoy that and that is totally bite size very manageable and it's interesting um, but another thing is is we have a lot of like card games and manipulatives and all these different things that 
sometimes I'm like, just get through the page and we'll be done. <laughs> um, <laughs> sometimes we just need to get through it. Um, so I have all of these wonderful things like geo boards and little clock cards and, you know, we play um, different math games, but like 21 or blackjack, if you are among us who play poker, <laughs> but um, you know, there's just different things. So math could be also like watching a Viheart video. If you've ever seen anything on the Fibonacci sequence about how there is so much beauty and math in, um, in nature. And so those are just some of the ideas. So music, um, I also thought about doing maybe folk songs. Um, you know, I remember growing up listening to a lot of like kids songs and things like this, but um, they all are tied back into real um, uh, folk songs and things like that, things that, you know, are historically part of um, our culture. And so I think that those are also valuable and those are fun and easy to learn. Yeah. YouTube is full of them. So um, Viheart video is the Fibonacci sequence. They are wonderful. They do a wonderful job about making math amazing. So if you're So you it. didn't choose math. So what'd you choose? <laughs> so this year I am teaching 16 now students um, Shakespeare wow. with another uh, teacher. And so I am doing Shakespeare because we need to memorize, I have two of my children are in the class as well, and we need to memorize a set piece and we have not done it yet. And so I thought, okay, well, we can definitely memorize this. Mm. Um, but part of my class is watching, reading and listening to um, 17 different plays of Shakespeare to kind of have an immersion um, thing. So we've already done quite a few, but I was thinking we need to be done by December. So yeah. we really need to kick it up a notch. So this is why it's self, um, self-serving. <laughs> uh, we have some things we need to do, but Shakespeare is truth, beauty, and That's goodness, true. I think. So I am choosing Shakespeare. And I have a couple right. ideas. Go ahead. What are you choosing, Missy? Um, I am choosing poetry. Oh. because I was thinking about the different options and I was looking at what do I think that my kids, myself too, but my kids mostly, what ought they have a relationship with and what do I want them to love but that they are resisting? And you know what, that's poetry. Hmm. Um, and it's not that they actually, they don't actually hate it, but they, re if of all the things in our morning time or different, you know, that's what they would pick as the thing, like, let's skip it. Yeah. But we are never skipping it. <laughs> Stop asking. We're never skipping. <laughs> Stop asking. That's awesome. <laughs> so, the main, so the main exposure will be doing our poems because we each have a poem for the term. And so we will not skip poetry in morning time in November. And then I'm getting, I was looking up yesterday. Um, I have a couple audible credits. So I'm going to get one or two collections of poems read oh. aloud. And, Cause I think that when you hear something like Shakespeare yeah. or poems read really well, yeah. that helps with the love. And mm -hmm. then I can just put that on in the car when they're a captive audience. Literally captive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, my turn? Yes, your turn. Okay, so I actually chose drawing, and Ooh. I did not think that this needed to happen. My kids are getting weekly art lessons at our co-op, but it's all um, watercolors. And then I started noticing, like, I had two of the four of them just making passing comments I can't draw, I don't like drawing, I don't like how my drawings turn out. And they're all doing really well at watercolors, but I'm realizing those aren't necessarily exactly the same skill set. And so then at the same time, you know, on Instagram, I'm seeing all this Inktober stuff. Yeah. So I'm scrolling through and there's all these daily drawings from people. And so I think what I decided to do actually is on my little sheet, which maybe you can't see, but I'm going to actually put in there a prompt for each day. Yeah. Like I'm just going to go to one of the Inktober pages and yeah. steal ideas because mm -hmm. I only, I only need a fraction, right? Cause we're only doing weekdays. So I only need a fraction from that list. 
And so then it'll be pre-planned already because I'll have the prompts on there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them three by five cards. So it's not very big. And I'm going to give them 10 minutes. And then we're going to um, do that just during circle time each weekday morning. And 10 minutes is short enough that I can even do it on the, um, the morning before co-op when we have a super short circle time because that's not like so much that it's going to make us late. Well, almost anything can make us late, but yeah. this shouldn't make us any later than we normally are because I insist on driving through Starbucks on the way to co-op every time I go. So anyway, I'm like, it doesn't matter how late I am. I'm bringing my coffee. So anyway, <laughs> that's an aside. Um, so anyway, so that's what we're doing. And my hope is that maybe we'll have a little bit more at the very least, that drawing isn't going to be a big deal. Because I feel like right now they've made it into a big deal. And yeah. I feel like if we do it every day, then they might not get any better only doing it for this month. But at the same time, they're probably not going to be making a big deal out of it because it's just something we did every day for a month. And I feel like that's the hurdle they need to mm -hmm. get over. So I did tell my 17-year-old who draws regularly that I was like, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. Like he leaves for after a, a certain portion of circle time anyway. So he hasn't told me because he kind of said, well, I haven't had much time for drawing. Maybe I'll join you. So I'm like, I just left that up to him. But for the other three, they're going to be doing it every day. And I think it's going to, and I'm going to, that my other thing though is that I like to draw, but I rarely make time for it. So my goal is to not just give the assignment to them and then walk off, but actually mm -hmm. stay and do it with them. So we'll see if I can, keep myself away from the laundry room <laughs> it's just right there calling to me <laughs> so anyway so that's what we're gonna do great i love Hopefully. it so does anyone else here in the chat box have ideas of things they might pick we've talked about math i was thinking while you guys were talking like grammar or sentence diagramming ah, ah, that'd be awesome. yeah. <laughs> I love that. It's just, I just, you know, I would enjoy diagramming a sentence every day. Totally. I'm just, I'm just not sure that I would actually do it every day. <laughs> um, this is a different time, but when we started nature sketching, I made my kids do it every single day. Um, and I think what is important to remember is that when they say things like, I don't like this, or I hate this, or don't make me do this. I think what we really need to remember is just add on a little thing silently is I don't like this. And then you just say in brackets or in your head yet. Um, mm -hmm. because it takes time for us to actually like it. So, and the yet may be in a month or in years. Um, but it's not like we're making our children do anything that's painfully, you know, painful or terrible. So these are good things and accept, expect resistance. But as you go on, you will yeah. find that if you are consistent in it, um, there will be less pushback. That's what I have found. Yeah. Um, yeah. They just were like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. And then I would just ask them, have you done your nature sketch yet? And they would say, oh, no, I'll just do that right now, Mom. And... Um, it's it's great when that becomes the the norm. So, yep. Okay. So Amy, oh, can I bring up Amy's question? Yeah, I liked yeah. it. She said, "I'm wondering how to do the things." Sorry, I'm scrolling down here. I'm wondering how to do the things I'm terrible at, not the things I don't like. And then she said, "For example, drawing. Um, my drawings are so horrible. It is sad." <laughs> um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm not laughing at you, um, but. Uh, oh, Corey had a good idea here. She was saying the how to draw books. And I was thinking the same kind of thing, like maybe getting a book that has the step-by-step -step drawing is like the, the crutch you need to get over the hurdle. But I don't know how often you draw. I know that um, John Weir Law says that um, people who draw well do draw and people who don't draw well don't draw. And so his whole thing is the act, like if you were to draw every day for a year, you would be better at drawing than you were before you started. And so his thing is like, you literally get better just from doing it every day, even if you're doing it really badly for a long time. And remember that you can have a warm, um, a warm up and he, John Muir Laws calls that the sacrificial pancake that you just can draw and you throw it away. So having nice. a sacrificial pancake to start out with might be a great tradition 
where anyone can draw anything and then we all throw it away and then we start our drawing. Ah. Um, I think that that can sometimes be the hurdle too is because I'm just drawing this and I need it perfect. Um, but the thing is, is, you know, perfectionists will come out like you wouldn't believe in drawing. Yeah, that's true. Um, it just really does. So I think having one that you just be, you're able to throw away first thing might be a helpful, um, if you have a kid that does that. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. I think the other thing is sometimes when parents are good at drawing, it discourages the children. So it's not necessarily a bad thing that you're not really great at it. Cause that, that would even cross my mind with my 17 year old cause he's really good at it. And I thought if he's there, then the ones who are I'm doing this because they're complaining that they can't draw. And I was a little bit afraid that their whole, like, I'm not good is going to, when they start comparing themselves, right. is going to like kick in. So, you know, if you're bad at it, then they're in good company because <laughs> they're little, they're bad at it too. <laughs> I do. I was going to say the same thing as Rebecca mentions and that mm -hmm. I don't know how like kosher the advice is, but I think that tracing helps. Yes. <laughs> so, um, and for years, what we did was we did copy work basically where we looked at somebody else's drawing and then we drew that because yeah. it's so much easier to see how someone else sees the lines rather than just going straight out to nature. So, we got some John Muir Law's books. We got some Claire Walker Leslie's books. Um, you know, anything um, is really, really helpful. And actually, if you have little kids who want to join in, but they're not ready to draw, I mean, usually little kids are easy to get to draw, but there are some really wonderful Dover um, coloring books that have great nature scenes and mm -hmm, things like that. So it doesn't have to be the ideal to be yeah. good. Mm hmm. Yeah. So let's talk about the sheet that we have and how to use it. All right. Every time I read this, I'm like, this month we will expose ourselves. It just I sounds know. terrible. <laughs> I thought that too. I couldn't think of a better way to put it, though. I really spent time on that. And then I was like, this is taking too long. And to kind of expose ourselves two <laughs> <laughs> not expose ourselves period <laughs> yeah. i was gonna say expose ourselves to chicken pox but... yeah <laughs> yeah really you can't do that every day a new contagious disease every day perfect um, <laughs> so we're gonna we tell what we're gonna say what we're committing to for the month that's what you put there and then you're supposed yeah. to find your why. So, like mine would probably say, Abby probably has to tell us. Uh, I was, yeah, I was gonna say, why. yeah, tell us, Abby. How do we find our why? Sounds like an Abby thing. <laughs> it is so yeah. an Abby. So, <laughs> your why is the reason that you're going to stick with this, and it's not necessarily the short term. It's your long term benefit, right? Um, it's it, you know, short term. Yes, you may reduce. Um, the resistance, but long term, the reason you are introducing poetry or the reason you are um, working on your skill of drawing is because these are valuable and useful things to our lives in the long term, right? Poetry is something that has been happening for since the written word, right? And before, because this is how we communicate beautiful words. Um, drawing actually is an incredibly useful skill. And it's something that people are like, oh, I can't draw. And if anything, maybe it's like, well, I want my kids to really kill it at Pictionary on game night, right? I mean, <laughs> you can have silly reasons if it's really personal. I think whys need to be personal. Um, the reason we're doing Shakespeare, my personal why is, well, it's partly the class, but I love Shakespeare and I want my kids to love Shakespeare. And the only way that you love Shakespeare is by hearing it, seeing it, and um, and learning to understand it eventually, right? So um, those are the things. And they're not going to probably pick up a Shakespeare play by themselves, but if I take them or if we are in the car and I just happened to throw in Julius Caesar because I just found that we had some um, CDs, then nice. so be it. <laughs> yes. Yes. So and, and, 
So my why for the poetry is because I want my kids to you um, enjoy hearing people play with language. Yeah. And maybe they'll be inspired mm -hmm. to play with language themselves, but I want us that um, language used in ways that are not everyday uses, but it's um, enjoyable, so. Yeah, that's good. I, I, I think my why actually, I didn't realize it until you said this, Abby, but it was wrapped up in what I said earlier, which is just like, I want them to get over feeling like drawing is some big deal. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I didn't realize I was giving my why then. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you who are saying, what if we can make it even better by combining them? By all means, but I think on the sheet, you choose one of those things and then you just very subtly do the other without anyone knowing. Because um, I think you can tell your kids about this challenge. I think it would be fun for them to be able to mark it off like, okay, for this month, we're gonna try yeah. something new. Um, invite them to be, to be participants, but also invite them to give you ideas. Maybe you choose that it's poetry, but they get to choose some poems, right? Um, you get to choose that it's drawing, but they get to choose what they draw. Um, you get to, um, you know, choose some of the, you get to choose the music. You can just put the playlist on. But yeah, any of those things. I think you should choose one though. I think it's better when you're starting out because um, straddling always uh, gets you into trouble. You'll be like, well, we'll just do music today. We'll do drawing tomorrow, you know. But if we were like, nope, we're doing drawing. And once we start, I'll put on the music or the music can be the cue for everyone to sit down and draw, but the drawing is the thing. Yeah. 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 It reduces decision fatigue mm -hmm. and it makes it easier to start. Yep. That makes sense. But it's not like December. You can't. So then on the music. back side, if you printed double sided, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, there's a place to just come up with ideas right here so you can just think of options to give yourself so you don't have to think on the fly every single day you can come up with one thing like Randy already has a slot and a certain idea and so that's where it is but if it's music or like you know the poetry um, you can come up with mul or multiple ideas for ways to um, add it into your day in easy easy ways and easy places. I think the when portion is also important because things yep. don't actually just magically happen in the middle of the day. What? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm that's so where morning time is really handy. Yeah. Yes, that's true. <laughs> that is true. Yep. And so then below this, after you do your brainstorming, then we have the actual one line journal. I don't remember whose idea this was, but I thought it was a really good idea where- I think it was yours, Randy. <laughs> well then. It was really good. Um, it, was it was so really good. good. It was so good, I forgot I had it. Um, <laughs> um, so anyway, so it's a one line journal, right? And you can kind of, I don't even think it needs to be the same. Like, I don't think you have to say, I'm always going to track my kid's response to this, or I'm always going to be tracking. Like, I would just say something that was notable about that day. So if you feel like a specific child had a breakthrough, yeah, write it down. But if it's more like, well, we did this right after breakfast and that didn't work because of this, you can note that too, because part of this is also your chance to kind of like troubleshoot how things are going and maybe by the end of the month what you really figured out was how to make this work for you over a longer term too mm -hmm. um like you might figure out that right after breakfast is the best time to catch everybody because they haven't all scattered or whatever so anyway so it's a it kind of like an open-ended but we gave you only one line so that you don't feel like this has to be super time consuming so so yeah you can you know divvy up your prompts into your circles and check them off but then you can write your one line journal. Or if you're like me, you might ditch the journal halfway through. <laughs> I'm not recommending it. I'm just being honest. <laughs> so do we need to do it together? Says Heather. What are you what? doing, Heather? <laughs> do you mean, can this be just for you? Is that what you mean? Oh, or does it have to be a group thing? Could you assign it for each individual child? I bet that's what she means. 
I think so. I mean, it kind of depends on what it is. Like, I think we all chose something that the most efficient way to do it is as a group. But I don't think that means there wouldn't. I mean, I could actually give everybody a stack of three by five cards and their prompts and have them each do it and turn it into me. And there might actually be group dynamic reasons to do that sometimes. Because if there's like competitive drawing going on, that's discouraging someone, which I could totally see this happening actually, then maybe like giving it all to them and having them just turn it into me would eliminate some of those issues. So like, I think knowing our own families helps with that kind of thing too, because yeah, mm -hmm. could be an issue. Or even um, like if you're playing something, whether it's music or Shakespeare or poetry or whatever in the car and not everyone is in the car, I would still count it. Yeah, yeah. true. Yep. That's true. And something else that might help for people that are drawing is some people, some of my kids have a issue when it's, they feel that it's pointless. Um, they don't get the bigger picture, the lifelong um, you know, gift that I'm giving yeah. them. Uh -huh. Yeah. So when that happens, we often will offer it to be a like very practical um gift that they can maybe give someone else like a drawing uh -huh. could be well we're going to send these to a nursing home because my kid who nice. thinks things are pointless often has a very kind heart towards elderly people right um so uh -huh. i think you can you know your kids but um for you know maybe trouble maybe um think about some of the trouble troubling issues that may pop up and um, figure out ways, creative ways that might make them um, be less resistant to it. Yeah, that's good. I like that. I'm trying to think if there's anything else we need to cover. We got most of it. I don't think so. I think that we will be, um, so we are hoping to hear about how it's going. So we'll put prompts yes. like in sistership throughout the month and if you want to post about something that worked or a photo of what you're doing uh, i think we want to see some of brandy's kids drawings <laughs> in the month um with with author's permission of course yes um use the hashtag skolay every day okay it's the same skolay every day hashtag we don't need a new one we just need to see because these are things that add um beauty and connection in our lives so yeah did did you look at the hashtag yet though we we always check hashtags but no. uh, sometimes they're weird what well, could do wrong with the word exposure you know i was going to say one more thing though about this really quick if that's okay with these sorts of things is um yeah this is all a tool and so you can use part of it or all of it as you want to. You can do it together or you can do it individually. You can do it just for your kids or just for yourself. Like really, um, we're just trying to figure out how to change that information action ratio. And so doing part of it or some of it or this way or that way, like no matter what way you choose to use it, you're still reaching the goal of us trying to live this instead of just studying it and then walking away. So anyway, I would just say like, don't feel bound. Like these are tools and, you know, and, and use them as you like, and we'll enjoy seeing what you come up with. So I just want you to feel freedom. 100%. Yeah. That's good. So thank you for joining us. Yes. And thank you, Abby and um, Brandy and we will see you all hopefully in the sistership and we'll talk yes. about it more there all right sounds good thank you